Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thank you. Hello once again, and here we are with the second in my masterclass series on corporate and business turnaround. The first one, if you recall, was outlining what I consider some uh, golden rules about approaching a turnaround assignment as an advisor or indeed as a, as a manager. So today, just want to briefly talk about organizing the structure of your turnaround project uh, before you start. I like to keep these things into the buy size chunks, fairly small, um, just a few minutes um, before we get on to the, the detail of going into the uh, plan itself. So first of all, today, we're going to talk about structuring your turnaround assignment. So here we go. So business turnaround masterclass two, organizing the turnaround project. Briefly, more Fleming, who are we? A global firm with a focus on transformation and strategic growth located in London and Berlin. Um, unlike other management consulting firms, we provide the same expertise, <clears throat> if not better, of course, um, but without the high, high fee rates. Just briefly, just before we to paint the picture, before we talk about the five point plan, um, looking at the life cycle of a business, this is from my own experience. Um, typically, businesses from startup go through similar phases from what I've seen in my experience as a consultant and business director. <clears throat> they start off growth, quite often exponential growth when you need a certain type of person, an entrepreneur, somebody who's got visions of growth, who can <clears throat> who can lead. Perhaps they leave a wake behind them. They're not very good in detail, particularly, but they're good at marketing, selling, um, promoting the product <clears throat> and growing the business. The business then reaches a stage where it needs more structure, more organization. Typically, we'll go through a period of consultation, cause, sorry, sorry, consolidation. Well, you may need a different kind of person, somebody who's more structured, more organized, um, more detailed person. And that could be your accountant, for example. Typically, many companies, if not most, go through some sort of crisis during their life cycle. It may be a major crisis, it may be a minor financial crisis. And then we need another kind of skill, and that is that of turnaround. So I think it's important to understand where we are in this life cycle and the sort of skills that we need and the sort of skills that we actually have on board. If we look at a traditional financial recovery <clears throat> as promoted by the insolvency profession, this involves basically recovering the business usually by some downsizing, disposal of assets, um, dismissal of employees, et cetera, selling off some of the assets, perhaps even selling the company, um, putting a bit more money into it, and really putting it back to where it was before, um, which is fine. But, you know, if the shelf is unstable, it's going to fall down again, um, because usually in these situations, nothing has changed. We've simply put the company back where it was before with a bit more money. But of course, it's going to have difficulty with trade creditors. It's going to have difficulty with credibility in the marketplace and the structure and the organization and the management style hasn't changed. So we end up back in resuscitation. And this is a classic situation that I've seen time and time again. So <clears throat> the five point turnaround plan. Well, this was developed um, through Moore Fleming when we started doing work for Her Majesty's, was Her Majesty then, not His Majesty, Her Majesty's government on a, a company rescue scheme for SMEs in the United Kingdom. So we developed this, this structure. This is not a process, you know, we, we, this is a, a structure that we work within, but in turnaround, my experience is that you have to be um, flexible, 
you have to be creative. Right, so the, the, the first thing, like any situation, any project really, we want to make change is to identify what is wrong. And this is what we call our, our diagnostic. And we, we developed a diagnostic um, through this business rescue scheme, which we use um, for advisors that I trained to go into a company and flush out what the major issues were and whether the company could actually be turned around. So this is the purpose of the diagnostic. So first thing first is to get into the detail of what are the issues. To do this, there are techniques that we will talk about and I will have a separate masterclass on carrying out the diagnostic. Um, but typically this involves root cause analysis, drilling down to actually find out what the real causes of the problems are, not what, are, what the perceived problems are, um, but what lies behind it. For example, when we say that um, we're not achieving sales, why is that? Is that because of the products that are not right? Is it because of delivery? Is it because of lack of planning? Is it because of lack of sales? So we drill down until we find the right um, cause of the problem. And we use the five whys technique, asking that question, why, 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 until we find out what is really wrong. And this applies to all the various functions and activities of the business. Um, and the, the diagnostic will be repeated and repeated um, as we go through the project, as we look at individual projects in each department and each sphere of activity <clears throat> in the business. Once we've identified the initial um, issues, the next step, which we can often do in parallel, is to create a window of time. And this means talking to trade creditors, other creditors, such as the tax authorities, but to give us breathing space, putting people on hold, telling them that we're actually looking at the situation, we're looking to resolve it, but we need a bit of time. <clears throat> it might be making changes in the way we do things, cutting out some costs wherever we can, such as overtime, working, etc., changing shift patterns, if that is applicable, and um, you know, not using some of the non-essential services that we might buy in. So wherever we can cut costs, we will do that as well. We're actually going to try to stop paying our money wherever we can. We want to stabilise the cash so that we can actually have a bit of time and breathing space to start doing the planning and implementation. Planning the long term, the first step is to carry out a, a cash flow forecast, usually for the next three months, 13 weeks, called the 13 week cash flow. We need to do that to understand where we are now in terms of cash and what the situation is going to be over the next three, three months and how are we going to manage or can we manage over the next three months? Because if we can't, then there may not be a way forward. So it is important to do that. And going back to the initial diagnostic, one of the first things we will have done, of course, is to actually carry out the acid test in terms of the solvency of the business. So that'll be the first phase of the, the diagnostic. So I'm assuming when we're going into this, we've already identified that there is the scope, the potential, and not a guarantee, but the scope to turn the business around. So during that window of time, <clears throat> we have planned the longer term um, project, the actions, the projects, the mini projects. Um, we've worked on the team, who's going to be leading, um, who's going to be helping. Um, we've perhaps changed the roles of some of the managers. We might have put the, for example, the managing director out um, into the marketplace on sales, if, if that's an issue. And quite often I found that that's a good measure because quite often it is the managing director who can make decisions about margins, prices, and who knows the business very, very well. Not always true, but quite often it is. So we then started implementing um, the plan and managing um, the project longer term. So implementation is actually putting in each of the measures that we've um, come up with during the plan and then managing it. And as I've said, it is an iterative process. So we keep doing the same thing over and over again until we actually achieve our overall 
objectives. So that is the, the five point turnaround plan in a nutshell. Um, the next masterclass, we will talk about the diagnostic, about understanding the real causes of the problem. Um, the lack of cash may not be the, the only problem. Looking at the five whys and root cause analysis. That's it from me for now.